So everybody eventually gets their start in programming, and for me it was about 26 years ago. A lot of my audience already knows this, but for those who don't, I started coding when I was roughly 9 years old, and that's where I got my start. This also means that I pretty much self-taught myself everything that I know. Although I did go to college later on in my life, I did not go for computer science. So everything I know about programming and engineering, I learned through lots of books, reading sites on Google, and not so much from a classroom. And even by the time I did go to college, which is in my 20s, I was already pretty skilled in my ability to write software. The only thing about starting so young and not having a ton of resources is although you have a huge jump start in your learning, you often don't learn as fast if you don't have the resources. And basically what I'm trying to say is by the time I was 20, it really didn't feel as if I had been involved in programming activity for 11 years at that point. Of course, fast forward to present day, I know exactly what I would have done differently. So that's what this video is about, is I want to give you the same advice that I would have given to my younger self about programming. And everything I say is going to apply to a lot of people watching this video. According to my YouTube analytics, probably about 60% of the people are just getting started out in their programming career. The majority of my viewers are between the ages of 16 and 25. The first piece of advice I would have given to my younger self is that I need to recognize that learning does not happen overnight. It's really common for somebody to get into their head thinking that they're going to go from no knowledge to just a mastery in a programming language in a short period of time, and that's just not really how it works. And this is true of any technology that's related to programming as well. Now, it is different once you already have some skill in an area. It is, of course, easier to pick new things up. But when you're just starting out, it's going to take time and you have to recognize that. Learning programming is very much a marathon and not a sprint. And it's also a marathon that never ends. And that's why it's pointless to sprint. The next piece of advice is to never bite off more than you can chew in terms of your abilities and your projects. Now this isn't to say you shouldn't push your boundaries, you absolutely should because that's the only way they're going to be able to learn new things. What this is to say is don't take on things that you absolutely cannot do because all that's going to lead to is just discouragement. And also try not to start projects that take too long. I guarantee that a tiny project that you finish is going to be immensely more satisfying than a half-finished huge project. And believe me, I'm no different than a lot of people watching this video. I have a massive software graveyard of projects that I simply never finished. And of course, there's a number of varying reasons why I didn't finish those projects, but a lot of them had a common denominator, and that was they were just too big, and I lost interest. So don't bite off more than you can chew. I really wish somebody gave me that piece of advice 15 years ago. The next piece of advice is don't limit yourself to one skill or one area of expertise. I know in the beginning when I started programming, I did a lot of PHP programming. And I remember telling myself early on, I'm going to be the best PHP programmer there is. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to be really, really good at that. And this ended up harming me in the long run because a piece of foreign technology would get thrown into the mix and I just wouldn't know what to do because I chose one thing that I was going to be really good at. And that ended up being a mistake. I believe it's very important to have a broad knowledge of a lot of things, but it's also important to have like those one or two things that you have a high level of proficiency with. I know when I have to get something done and it doesn't matter what I use, I reach for the same one or two tools and I just knock it out. So just try not to lock yourself into one thing because you'll end up limiting yourself a good deal in the long term. This next piece of advice is very important and it's be confident in the abilities that you know you have. Being confident in your abilities is very important because it's what's going to allow you to push your boundaries, do things that you think you actually can't do, and ultimately be successful in that goal. I know when I was a little bit younger and I landed my very first professional development job, and when I say professional in this case, I'm just referring to a development position that required me to actually go to an office, and it was a PHP position, and I was very nervous because I had no idea how my skills compared to others. I was hired into a position for which there was three other people and I had no clue where I was going to rack and stack in there and if I was going to be just no knowledge at all or if I was going to be a lot better or I just wasn't sure. And really I didn't actually care if I was going to be better or worse than other people. That wasn't really it. I was wondering if I was going to be successful in this job. At the time I really had no gauge for like what is a junior developer, what is a mid-level developer, what's a senior developer, you know, what am I walking into? And as it turned out, everything ended up being okay. The job I was hired for ended up being really easy. And despite it being my first professional development position, I did more than good enough. I was probably overqualified for that position. But it didn't really matter to me because it was a fantastic learning experience. You know, I worked with a lot of cool people. I learned a lot from them. They learned a lot from me. We did some cool projects and everything was fine. I was there purely for the experience. It was my first position after all. 
But the moral of the story, of course, is if I would have just been confident in my abilities at the time, then it wouldn't have been an issue to begin with. Next piece of advice, which is kind of related, is to surround yourself with smart people and try to find a mentor if you can. This was kind of a mistake I made when I was younger, and it was something that I just didn't really think about because, well, I had no mentor to begin with, so how would I even know that I needed a mentor? And of course, your experiences may vary. I attribute me not finding one simply to just a lack of guidance and a lack of technological opportunities, mostly related to the fact that the area I was geographically located in just wasn't conducive to that kind of stuff. I truly believe, though, if I lived in a place that had more opportunities or if I could have found someone that would have taken an interest in me and my technological pursuits, that I would have been a lot farther along by the time I was maybe 18 to 20 years old. And finally, my last piece of advice is to learn by doing. Of course, there's tons and tons of theory that you can get into just by reading, and that's really great and all, but programming really is about practical application of skills. And the quickest way to learn is just by doing it. Now, this is, of course, not to say you shouldn't read at all. You definitely should, but you should be reading and you should be doing, reading and doing. This is partly why I feel that academics kind of fall short a little bit is because there's a lot of reading and not enough doing. For the most part, you should be taking on projects of increasing complexity that goes in line with your current skill set. Certainly, there's probably more advice that I would have given myself if I had a long time to think about it, but these are the kind of the primary things that when I thought back when I was younger that these are the things that I really wish I would have heard that I believe would have helped me drastically. And for those who are brand new in this trade or just getting started out, I really hope that this advice also helps you in your pursuit of whatever your technological aspirations are. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video.